Welcome Habibi with another reaction with the Toxic channel. We did we just finished with the Jake Paul Georgianko but in the podcast of Jake Paul we just finished it. I just finished the reaction. I'm going to post it today and this one I'm going to publish it after that video tomorrow so probably tomorrow. And uh, this one is a different side of Jake Paul. They didn't say too much. We don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to get into it and see cuz I like if they speak about the situation, how it went and stuff like that. If maybe there is a match between uh, Paul and, and Drew, you never know. It could be. But anyway, before we dive in, guys, make sure to check the store as a support. Buy, uh, buy something from there just as a, uh, to support us uh, to growing up. And oh, I'm lonely this winter. I'm fulfilling the wish of the loving being I don't know. And uh, just make sure to search to check the store, guys. Maybe you're gonna like, you're gonna find something you like. I'm gonna put store around here. Just check it, guys. And let's dive in. For a child that I'm watching online, quite pride of success. He's getting a lot of hate. He reminds me a lot about you. No, he, no, don't say that. Come on. He reminds you of my old version of he myself. He reminds me of you. You know why? Because I see every move is calculated. And I think he's doing the same thing that you did in a different shock factor. But you got to remember, you paved the way where being the problem child could be a solution. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Who is it? His, uh, his name. I'm just playing. I don't fight. I do not pray. I only go the way of Mr. Yahweh. It's not often I sit down with somebody and they say something that makes me think. Well, this was great. I love you guys. Will you give me something to think about? My own damn way. I had a lot of fun on this interview. Welcome back, guys. Uh, this episode is is long overdue. We've been um, we we've been going back and forth on doing this, and uh, I am more than excited about what happened on your podcast. Uh, I'm I'm excited to jump on here because I feel like for you it was more about me, but I want to center this about you. And uh, there's so many things I want to dive in. The first thing I want to say is you're you're your relationship to the internet is known as the problem child now as somebody who knows who you are i know you as the man who solves the problem before we get this one i want to speak about jake i know there a lot of people in the internet doesn't like jake paul maybe because he's arrogant maybe because he have a lot of ego but in all cases you have to understand this 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 guy he came from nothing he becomes someone and he's doing something as a boxing he would he have a plan and he's right trying to reach his success, whatever his plan is and whatever his mind is, he's trying to ch reach it. So you, you need to be, you need to give him credit for everything he done. Uh, fuck the ego, fuck the arrogance. Don't care about this one. Everyone have his own personality. If you don't want to be, have the same personality, try to achieve what he's trying to achieve, but in your own personality. That's all I'm saying. Boom, child. I but like Jake. Somebody who knows I who like really Jake. I know you as the man who solves the problem. And and I'm not trying to gas you up and this is not my my uh uh my swing at like oh let me make the guest feel comfortable. There's a lot of things Jake that I do in my life because I watched you do it. Like and wow. I'm truly wow. truly truly saying that. That's a that's a that's a great compliment and Th I appreciate thank you. that. I, I, know, I know the troubles you dealt with that you don't even talk about in public. I yeah. know the personal things you've walked through. So I just want to let you know that when I look at you, even though you're younger than me, I see a greater man than I, truly, because I know what you had to overcome and you did it while accompanying your friends and your family. You, and you, all you did was try to serve and build them up. And I watched people break you down over and over and it didn't break your character and you try to run with the problem child you try to be this evil villain but it's not you bro yeah it's not you and you may have sold this to sell tickets but i know who you are bro and just to let you know that if i stand in front of you or not in front of you in front of anyone i am proud to call you my friend thank you i'm very very proud we're, to call we're brothers you my for life forever and and it, it day one like helped each other started from from 1600 notes what what is it three six six zero Beverly Boulevard or yeah. something like that? You taught me how to ride a you, you taught me how to ride a motorcycle there. Yeah, and we would just go on go go karts all night long, Do you zipping remember, through the streets. You remember when uh, uh, <laughs> Snapchats uh, they did you couldn't even import sounds yet, so my man made me hold a speaker 
<laughs> do you remember those speakers? You made me hold. You're like, all right, dude, I'm okay. And I, I literally had one phone, one speaker. He'd be like, okay, dude, now gunshots. So I would go to YouTube and type, do, do, do. And it's literally him, like, do, 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 fighting fake drawing objects that he was making. And this guy was creating stories. And by the way, just FYI, no one was doing that. No one was creating stories through a timeline. He was just ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. I want to circle back and I want to hang myself to dry here. I'm going to embarrass myself, but there was a moment that you humbled the hell out of me, bro. And we were in front of uh, Hollywood Boulevard and Vine, and this kid came up to you. Now, you just started fire with Team 10, and we're with Alyssa, we're with the Dober twins, and the level of success got to my head, and this kid ran up to you, and he was like, uh, he goes, Jake, I have this camera, and I have this, and I have this, and then he was just so like clingy and like just so uncomfortable uh, that me and Alyssa were just joking around about it. And we were joking and joking and joking all the way up till we get up to the stairs. And you sat down on the love sack and you look and you go, I'm fucking embarrassed to call you guys my friends. He goes, who the fuck do you guys think you are? And you looked right at my eyes and you said, that man did the same thing that you did to Logan in the gym and yet you look down on him. What kind of piece of shit are you, bro? So that was the day that you changed a huge perspective in my life, bro. Wow. That's Dude. deep. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't I don't remember this happening, but but yeah, man, I, I believe that any person that comes up to me in public, what whatever it might be, that they can teach me something, they could tell me something, they could be my future business partner, who they could be the next you never uh, know. Great, most famous person in the world. You know, it's like me going up and taking a picture with Anderson Silva. Then 20 years later, I knock him to the canvas. It's like you never know who that person is going to be. And there's days where I'm irritated and not in the mood or I'm literally eating at a nice restaurant. And there's food in my mouth. And it's like, please, like, OK, this is a little bit much right now. Mm. Of course. But I yeah, I try to have that perspective. And also, if someone looks up to you like that, they uh, think you are the coolest person in the world or something Humble. and you and you want to I want to give them that energy and that press impression mm -hmm. to keep on believing in 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 that and um, I've had moments where it turns out you know that person that came up to me or whatever the random person is that I mean funny enough I mean I'm just connecting these dots now but it's like Alyssa came up to me as a fan yeah mm -hmm. and asked me for a picture yeah so it's like do you think you got this idea of listening to the man that somebody might not listen to because you were the man that no one listened to that you knew inside of your heart I'm gonna show you guys and so you didn't want to turn Jake Paul away it, no, exactly that. And I guess you're kind of putting it even now. I'm kind of like realizing that. But I guess that is what it was deep down was being the runt, being the problem child, being the one who, you know, I would go into the classroom and it's like. Oh. Yeah, Jake Paul, as I say from the beginning, he's he's not a villain. He's just trying to sell because the Internet put him as a villain. They put him as this in this picture like he was the villain. So he's trying to sell that to get pay-per-views or to get money from it or to get uh, tickets for for the match. So he's just he's just a character trying to sell. But Jake is is not what you see because the Internet ha doesn't show you the real you. You know what I mean? It's always in character in the internet. A few people who are really them, but most of them are just in character. Problem child, being the one who, you know, I would go into the classroom and it's like, oh, you're, you're Logan Paul's brother? Like, oh, like, this is going to be great. And then it, then, like, it all goes wrong, you know? But, like, being that odd one out, not really, like, fitting in in certain places not feeling the like a lot of love uh from my peers and and such growing up i guess yeah that that is where it comes from i guess well, it's, it's such like, a beautiful thing for you to be 
so strong in your character to not only, so at the time when you're being, you know, kind of crapped on, you could be strong in your character and be like, okay, you know what, like, it's okay, like, one day they'll know, one day they'll learn, it's all right, like, I'm gonna keep doing what I need to do. And then getting to that point and being strong in who you are and being like, no, like, I'm even gonna straighten out my friends. I'm gonna sit them down and be like, that was disgusting. Not being, like, too embarrassed, like, it's a, that's a hard thing to call out your friends and to tell them, like, an honest truth like that. But yeah. you did something difficult that was better for him in his life, and that was also better for you because then you got to stand strong, you know, in who you are. Amen. And do you, was there something, when you felt like everybody was kind of, like, pushing you to the side, was there something that inspired you to, to kind of be strong and to be resilient? Yeah, I think I knew that I was different, and had something special i just i didn't fully know it but i just felt it i guess faith. in a sense like you had faith in yourself because i at the time i just felt like i kept on getting kicked down and down and down and down but i think i was just like so passionate and so driven and what and resilient i think the resilience like came from my dad and that and that toughness to not let them shape that character and kick me down into a box and put me there and I think just pushing through that, I slowly found wins. But specifically enough, like it, it, it actually made me more competitive and driven. So I think when they're mm -hmm. kicking you down like that and you're not fitting in in certain places, you can go one or two ways. You could cower mm -hmm. or you could just double down. Yeah. And I love, I love the word double down in the in the phrase not it's obviously two fucking words but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the but the phrase double down because it's like oh something bad happens go even harder in yeah. that exact same category oh you lost go even harder yeah. uh versus cowering and i think i kept all of that like competitiveness and that hunger and drive and motivation deep inside me and let it fuel me on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. and i think there was a lot of times like even specifically in the 1600 vine building where i was like going so hard to prove that i was like better than some of those people in there and had better ideas that it it, it required me to level up mm -hmm. in my creativity in my work ethic and who i was as a man and that's great and that's what I needed, and that's what was prescribed to me in my destiny. And I would be, like, checking the numbers. I was the last in the building in terms of followers. And by the time Vine got shut down, I believe I was, like, number four in the building. So, like, I went from the 20th most followed to number four. Mm -hmm. And I've never even spoke on this. No one even knows that I've, like kept you, track of that in my you let head your work do the talking. but i was yeah exactly i was like okay that's the best thing you can do all you like people you, you're gonna you're gonna see and and yeah like i mean we kind of talked about it today like i think it did really affect me because i the came first thing you brought it up I, when you I, saw me i saw george how we haven't seen each other in a while and he, he made I a joke made and, and a he, joke he about jabbed at somebody and i said i go oh still feeling it but here's the thing bro like you, you you didn't use it in a, in an evil way. You 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 weaponized it. You realized that okay, I could use this as fuel. Yeah. And you took it in the right direction. So I'm very proud of you of that. Here, my other question is this: How, how did you find the faith when? Because like you know, everything's a roller coaster, right? So there's sometimes you have a really big drop, and and before you got that break on Disney, before you got uh, uh, the 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 YouTube success, and you're just you, there's the up and downs, right? There's a portion where you're just in belief that you're great, but your work is not showing truly that you're great yet. There's a lot of that version of Jake Paul out right now. And how, how does a man keep going if he really, cause bro, you never really saw an end goal. You're like, if I get to this number, then it'll be great. You just kept pushing. So what, like, what is it that a man needs? Does he need to believe in himself? Does he need to uh, uh, not care about the noise? Because that's exactly what you use as fuel. What does a man not need to keep going? The the word the word quit, because there was moments where I didn't believe in myself. There was moments where I didn't have fuel. You know, like that motivation runs out. Yeah, you sure. know the 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 thing. Yeah, uh, I speak about this one. Uh, the motivation is not a good fuel to use it, guys. The motivation is just fake things. To be honest with you, I speak this with my cousin. Uh, 
Now he's living in Dubai. We both of us left the country. Uh, I am in Germany. He's in Dubai. And um, we're trying to make a living. We're trying to make something successful. We're trying to do anything with our life. We're trying to help the family. We're trying to do to be successful. And as I said, it uh, the family for me is a, a good fuel. And I was, I reply in the comment uh, the good people work just, not just for themselves, but they work for the for generation of to put their especially when you say to your father like uh, you know you know you don't need this fucking job or you to, to to your mom you don't need this fucking job i retire you this that's what i'm trying to work for all my life i've been dreaming since i was maybe 12 or 13 years old uh, i dreamed of be a football professional football because i'm play i'm really good player anyway that's high confidence and uh the only thing i dreamed about is just to give everything for my family for my parents for my my mom and yeah this is a good feel but i'm, I'm saying is motivational you have to understand is fake things motivation is really fake you don't you you you, you cannot put everything on motivation or oh, today I'm, what about if tomorrow you're not motivated are you going to do the same shit or no yeah so it's better to not use it as a, a fuel to push you but use discipline as a fuel okay today i'm going to do this even if i'm not motivated but use discipline guys Put the fuel as a discipline, not motivation. Motivation is just fake things. Don't trust it. Fuel. You know, like that motivation runs out. Yeah. You know, the the, the yeah. things someone said about you that, like, makes you work harder for a month. And then you lose. Oh, well, no one's saying anything now. Like, even losing yeah. to Tommy, I was, I was so, so fired up and invigorated and in the gym working so, so hard. But that was only... That only lasted for like a couple of months. And so then it's like a commitment to the goal. And I think the commitment one makes to, to self is above all else. And my, com my goal was to be the first social media billionaire, the first self-made social media billionaire. And so even if I would fail, I would be like, okay, I learned from that. Okay, the, I'm one step closer. Okay, I have these connections now. Okay, this didn't work out, but I'm, but I'm not stopping because I think that's... So your success came from knowing that it's not the end of the world when it feels like it's the end of the world. Yeah, you only, you only lose when you quit. Well, you said that your father taught you to be resilient. Do you feel like growing up doing sports has a lot to do with that? So guys, make sure to check the store. You're gonna find a lot of things you're gonna enjoy, and it's just. And in the same time, when you buy something, you are supporting us to to create a better content anyway. Yeah, look, I think that hyper competitiveness and wanting to be the best, and. But well, I want to circle that best, right? Because now us athletes are like, as long as you participate, you win. But you're no. saying that's not the case. It's not you just enter that you win. It's that you enter with the mindset that I'm going to beat everybody around me and I'm going to be number one. Do you think... Or die trying. Exactly. You might you not. You might not be. But it's like shoot for the moon even if you miss your land amongst the stars, which I said to my friends the other day. But we started joking about it because the saying is shoot for the moon even if you miss your land amongst the stars. But the st a lot there's more stars that are further. So the saying should be shoot for the stars, and even if you miss, you'll land on the moon. That's a, that's a side thing. I got, hey, sorry, my sorry. Man, my man one day was sorry. like, you know what, dude? Sorry. <laughs> Think about it. There's stars everywhere. <laughs> the star, there's stars that are much further than the moon, yeah. so you should shoot for the stars, and, and even if you miss, you'll land on the moon. I want to I wanna circle back to your, to your uh, pops, because I know you guys bump heads, but there's love there. Do, would you say your younger self is grateful that he listened to the bullshit that at the time thought was bullshit, like when your dad was pushing you? Because when you're a kid, you're like, dude, I hate my dad, bro. He's always making me outside shoveling snow, and we're always hunting, always doing this. But then later on in your life, you're like, oh, thank God. If my dad didn't make me work harder than my neighbors, I would not be able to compete at this level. It's interesting. I don't think I ever hated him for making us work. Uh, I think there was moments where I was like, this sucks, kind of. But I, I, I didn't, I didn't ever, I kind of, he made me enjoy working, actually. That's important. He made it fun. Like, and at the end of the day, we're going to Dairy Queen and I'm going to get you a blizzard. Yeah. Or like, 
he made me appreciate, you know, earning, earning the yeah. twenty dollars for the, you know, ten hours of work or whatever he would give us. Oh, I'm lonely this winter. I'm fulfilling the wish of the loving being. I don't know that would hold for me to be alone. I'm lonely this winter. Would you say your success? and your foundation would be with or without your father? It, yeah, it wouldn't be possible. It, it wouldn't be possible at all. And, and, by the way, and as, well as, my, as well as my, you know, the mom, it's, it's that learned behavior. And that is everything. My mom is the one who taught me manifestation. So it's like, if I didn't believe, and my grandpa taught her, it's like, if I didn't start writing those goals, you know, on my mirror when I was in high school, they were much simpler then. It was, I'm going to win the wrestling tournament this weekend. And I would say it over and over again every single day. And then eventually, like, that, that's still a part of my daily practice till this day, but the goals are much bigger. But, it w but once I saw that it was real and it made me feel good and it brought more into my life, it's, it's essentially, it's manifestation, prayer, like, it's all kind of speaking, speaking into existence exactly how bad is speaking uh bad things to yourself like like for example the kid that's uh self-deprecates for comedy right every day he's in class he's like well yeah i'm the idiot i'm the idiot i'm the idiot at one point it's like yo the joke's on you dude you're making yourself an idiot uh yes and yes and if you take it all lightly though because i think there's a points of self-deprecation that are yeah i will refer to this one before he said when you say we say the, the the word is the most strongest things. Yeah, and the guy, he says you should uh, change the name of the channel. But anyway, I don't give a fuck about nobody what he says. I do things myself and I, how I see them. I like feedbacks. I like critics. I like things people telling me what is this and what is this. And in the end of the day, it's just my opinion. No matter what you're going to say, in the end of the day, I will choose my opinion. Even if it's wrong, I will happy be wrong with it. But uh, as I'm saying, like, if you say, like, uh, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, uh, I'm an idiot, it, it doesn't mean you're an idiot. It's just, you don't, you just take it lightly, as he said. It doesn't mean when you say something like, oh, I'm an idiot, it means you are an idiot. No, you're just saying it as, oh, maybe I did the small things. Or when I say, oh, toxic channel, it doesn't mean I'm toxic. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean I do dumb shit or I do a lot of, uh, it's just the name of the channel. It's a joke. I find it really funny because a lot of people say, like, Oh, this is toxic. This is toxic masculinity. This is fem a lot of people saying toxic, toxic. All of all the word we hear is just this. So I took it as a fun joke, and I just do it like this. It has nothing to do with the, my character or my personality, guys. So be lightly, take the joke, and enjoy. Take it all lightly, though, because I think there's a points of self-deprecation that are good to also like keep yourself humble. humble. Like yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I make fun of my own hairline and my crooked nose and all of these things, crooked teeth, underbite. Like, like a Andrew Scholes was saying, like with the with the bulldogs that can go outside and like catch water, <laughs> and like that was me. Like <laughs> I, I have an underbite and shit. But but like I think there's a point where it's where it's good to, to keep yourself humble but but negative where if that's all you do then no and what happens if your friends are negative all the time yeah that's bad it's a no well. no that's bad your surroundings well. is very important one well, of my frequency and more frequency and then you're just habitual, poisoning yourself habitual yeah and it becomes your default setting to like go into the negative to be rude to yourself one of my 2024 goals is to be mindful and control every thought and have better higher quality thoughts that is so beautiful and on the same path that i'm at i did this thing and i just spoke about this i hate re-saying things i feel like i'm being redundant but this is on the same page as that uh if i said something negative to somebody in my head because i was around people that just talked a lot of shit and i became my environment I trained myself out of it by, if I talk shit about Reed in my head, I would say three nice things about Reed, and then in my head I'd be like, you cannot speak to that man. Just because he cannot hear you doesn't make you less of a man for thinking of that way. You know what's funny? It's funny that you're practicing this now because you're the one who taught this to me, and I don't know if you remember this, but I, like, I don't know, like a few years ago, I was having like a lot of issues with my skin, 
and that was like that was really hard on me you know because like just being in front of the camera all that stuff i think and you had the same problem as well yeah skin yeah with acne yeah. and being on camera i mean my shit's still fucked up no your skin looks great no don't lie no to me. Skin looks <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I have this like thing right yeah, here. Yeah, but acne, and you know, it's hard because it, it gets to you because it gets to your mental and and you brought that up to it's me. It's true. It fucks you. I cry about it, cry about it. And you said, I have a question for you. You're like, when you see other people with acne, you're like, do you judge them? And I was like, no. I mean, I don't judge them. I just, I know that I don't like my acne. So I'm like, oh, damn, like, I don't like that acne. And you're like, hmm. You're like, the next time you see somebody with acne, you think something bad. You're like, say three beautiful things about that person and see how God will change this for you. And that was a really big thing. And I know that was a really big thing for me in how God like helped me like heal my skin. Because how could I be judgmental of something on other people when I know it like it destroys me and it hurts me and it makes me like not want to leave the house. That's beautiful because yeah. I think that's everybody talks shit about things that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Like the people that tell me I talk too much are the people that talk too much are the people that are like Oh, he tries to be funny or the people that probably tries to be funny You you hate the person that you look in front of because it mirrors what you're battling inside True. So True. if you could fix the demon inside then there's no problem anymore. Shout out Jack Harlow The ones that hate me the most look just like me. Dude, you tell yes. me what that means. Yes. Yeah. By the way, no, no shot at Jack Harlow, but he was like the sweetest rapper. I would DM him. I was like, yo, I love your song. Just like as a fan, he would always, he would always message me back. And then I was like, yo, you should hop on the podcast. <laughs> it just left me on the <laughs> Hey, it happens, bro. Shoot your shot. <laughs> Shoot your shot. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Wayne. Yeah, Jack, if you see this, please come on the podcast. If you come I'm on a now. big fan, dude. Even though you left me on red, I'm still a big we fan. We forgive you. Yeah. Well, you damned him, too. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, he, wait, he left That's you why on. he doesn't want to be on the podcast. He's like, brother, you don't know. I don't want to be there. No, uh, no, no. But okay, circling back to you. Um, okay, so we we realize that your surrounding is very important. Uh, how, but how does a man do, how does a man get out of his environment if he loves them? It's hard to get away from your mom when your mom's behaving bad. It's hard to get away from your best friend because in your heart you're taught you never abandon the ones you love. But what happens when the ones you love are the ones that are the weight that keeps you sinking in the water? that you cannot breathe in. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to uh, you have to make sure you're good first and foremost. The the other podcast was uh, hilarious, it was funny. Uh, they, they didn't speak. They spoke about serious topic, but it was uh, I finished it by the way, guys. I finished it out of the reaction. They speak about really good things. Uh, it was most of it really the religion. Uh, it was really nice topic, nice note. And uh, it was most of it funny. And this one is much much more deeper and the question is much better well i think the other one is for entertainment and this one is for interviewing like to for deep things and stuff if if you aren't good as a as a person as self then that's going to make everyone around you kind of come to your level and so if you're not good and you're not happy and you're not fulfilled you can't fill up anyone else's cup not your mom not your dad not your brother not your sister and so that calling inside of, of me i wasn't good i was like i need to i need to live life i'm not meant to be in this box and i had to jump out of the bird's nest and fly and at the end of the day your parents are adults and they had 40 50 years to figure things out and guess what they did they'll be perfectly fine and i don't know if i'm answering the right question no but, you're answering it perfectly but basically at some point it's okay to be a little bit selfish when you're younger and you have to figure out how to make yourself happy and how mm -hmm. to find your purpose and to fulfill your dreams and if your parents didn't do that and they are clearly unhappy divorced and <laughs> and trying to give you advice well should you take it or should you take the advice from the people who are where you want to be mm. and practice what you preach that's what i realized from a young age and that's why i think i butted heads a lot with with my dad in those younger years um because i felt like I knew where I needed to go and it turns out I did but and maybe that's not the case for some people and of course there's trials and tribulations along the way but you definitely have to 
look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and your parents and all of those people have their own destiny they've had decades to figure everything out for themselves and it's time it's time for me jake paul to take control of my future and do what i want to do so would you say so take a little bit of room do what you gotta do as you said and then would you come back to them and try and communicate with them the wisdom that you feel that well, you have well i believe is that your father uh, when he give you an advice he give you an advice from a place of love it's not because he hates you or something he's just a place of love and he giving you the best decision that he think it's the best decision for you he doesn't know how the word is uh, he he he's in the old generation you are in the new generation you know how the new world work and and he know only about how his generation worked and what he should do in that time like his father try to put him and he went through and he's trying to give you the best advice for him that he see that this is the good advice for you but you see it differently it doesn't mean your father doesn't like you or dislike you it it means that he's he's just he have a, another vision and the vision that you are seeing and your father seeing are not the same and the best the best the best medicaments for that is just to go and do it and show your father that uh, this is my path and i'm trying to do it and i hope you're going to be proud of it because there is nothing l better than a proud dad. Trust me, guys. When your father tell you I'm proud of you, it means a lot. Learned. Well, that's yeah. I mean, that's that's essentially exactly what happened. And I, w but where I know how to do that was my brashness, which is what I learned from my dad of the way to communicate that. I mm -hmm. wasn't I wasn't a good communicator in terms of relationships peer to peer, brother to brother because I was just like f aggressive and and overly passionate. There's there, like we were talking about on on the pod it's like there's a certain way to convey and communicate things and I just didn't have that ability until I was like 22 23 and now still learning that and getting better at it it's it's not just something you like pick up and have overnight and you naturally as human go to your default setting which you're like uh, the the a guy kid is going to be exactly like their dad and so i had to shed that skin of how to communicate with people in a proper way and i still ask gus or <laughs> Brandon or Jasper like there are moments where I jump back into that default setting and you know perfect yeah, yeah exactly but it's yeah. different falling into it once in a while versus an everyday pattern exactly yeah. is that why you showed your brother compassion when the whole world was like why would he talk to his own brother like that is because you know where your brother got his nutrients from yeah no and, and that's that's kind of why I, I sat there and I was like you don't you don't fight fire with fire mm. and so I just was like okay I, 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 I f f don't recall the conversation of like how it went, but I kind of just like took the energy with grace and was like, yeah, this is not how, I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh yeah, well, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, if you know the Paul family, that's not how you get across to us. And I have to applaud you by the way, for the way that you held yourself when you were in that situation, you absolutely did hold yourself with grace. And that showed, with your actions, by you not saying much, that showed everything. You said everything. There's nothing you could have said in that moment that would have I, I want to. I want to tag on to what she said because she got to see you at your excellent performance. I got to see you when you were practicing that performance. And that practicing of biting your tongue back, being patient, breathing. I've watched you blow up. I've watched you guys almost fist fight each other yeah. over a silly little argument. And... For you to go from there to here, it's all from, and this is my perspective, practicing being that person. Yep. Because one year you may do it four days out of seven days. The next year you're doing it one day out of seven days. And then in five years, maybe it's once a month. And now it's like once in a while when I'm tired or stressed, I blow up. But it wasn't like overnight you decided, hey, I'm going to be a more patient man. To be patient, you have to be patient. No, and, and <laughs> that is, yeah, it, it took a lot to get there and um, credit to Susie who's who's life coach therapist for me but 
it takes work. It's like being in the gym. It's no different. It's w if, if we go to the gym, if we go to our job, if we play sports, how come we don't spend time like working on emotional intelligence and working on understanding ourselves and growing as a person? And so I think for nine months straight, maybe, uh, I was speaking with Susie every night for about an hour to two hours just learning myself mm -hmm. and just uncovering things and identifying it. And that's the first step. Is it is hard to do that? Is it, is it uncomfortable to share feelings and work on things that you bury? Is it, what, what's the worst part of like getting yourself out there with another person? Is it a humiliating standpoint? Is it like, do you have to fully surrender? What does it look like for a man that's in recovery of his mind? It's a hundred steps back and it's you're creating more work for yourself and you're getting kicked to the bottom of the hill and you have to retrain all your default settings and it, it takes a lot of time um and you have to want to do it and it's not easy and i think that's why a lot of people are afraid to go and do ayahuasca or to go and unveil the unveil these things about themselves or to even speak with someone because the, the the saying is I had five problems and then I spoke to a therapist and realized I had 50 mm. and it's true because if you have a good therapist, they're going to say, oh yeah, well, this is happening because X, Y, Z, this is how you're programmed. You're, you're thinking about this problem, but you need to fix this problem. Um, Hearing that from somebody that you want to get better by, right? Like that's like going to a mechanic and being like, yo, I, I need an oil change. And they're like, well, actually you need to rotate your tires. You need to get an airbag, exactly. you gotta get oil. How does a man not get overwhelmed, frustrated? He barely got himself to pick himself, sorry, he barely got himself to pick himself up and deliver himself to a person where he wanted to solve these problems. How does a man not drown in being told that he has more problems? How, how does he not run away? Like how, how, how did you stand firm and being like, okay, well damn, like there's more work to do besides having your work ethic that you're blessed with how does a man that doesn't have your work ethic achieve these goals without being afraid and running away from them I think uh, it's life that's that's life you need the adversity joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain the work to make yourself better is what makes it so much sweeter when you get to that point the the reward that's waiting for you on the other side it's like if if everything in life was a treasure hunt to find the gold then everybody would work on themselves and because it's a fun we're going through the jungle we're going to encounter all these problems but we're going to get the gold inside the cave and we're looking at the map and it's amazing and this is a fun cool outer bank story but it's, it's no different, you know, th there's gold waiting for you in terms of who you are as a person when you can figure those things out, fix some of those problems, start to change into that man and life will start to become so much sweeter and all the things you have wanted will come to you so much faster. And it's, I think knowing that maybe above all else is what people should look forward to. Like so e have even faith if it's that it's gonna take you to a better place not even you don't even need to have faith you it's going to mm. it's certain yeah so like certain it, faith yeah it, it's like Would if you i do this work and i become better and i and i work with someone to identify these problems and i go into these spiritual ceremonies and want to integrate and come out better then it's certain that life will be sweeter because i'm a testament to that it's like i went 100 steps backwards and then took all of those steps and then leaped leaped years and years uh, ahead and all the things in my life started to just unravel right in front of me right in front of my eyes mm. so guys here he's going to speak uh, about um, uh, how he get uh, in a fight with uh, Dana White uh, Dana White is uh, the president of the UFC if you're familiar with it and boxer in the sport by far and it's just crazy making change is is your formula right you get like you said you do the vlogging you do the youtube you do the vine you do all the stuff you make change um and i, I noticed you had a uh like a back and forth with dana and 
to be honest, that one kind of threw me off for a loop. Now, I don't know what fighters are getting paid. I don't know the structure of fights, but I, if you peel back the POV on how you guys live your life and, and, your, and your values are very almost similar. You guys have very good same point of views outside of the paying thing. Have you ever tried to peacefully, instead of like torturing him online, have you ever tried to pull him aside and be like, Dana, explain to me why you're doing this when I know you're standing up for people's rights, you're standing up for the way they speak, you're doing good things behind closed doors. I need you to educate me on why is it that they're risking their lives for this amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think that that approach is going to work. Um, it's going to take something else. However, saying you're going to do things for people and saying free speech this and free speech that and doing all, all types of things is different than your actions. So if you could act like you're a good person and act like you want to help the world and all of these things, but if your actions don't align with that, then you're just a liar. And I'm not saying that's what he is. Mm. Um, I think you're right in terms of there's a lot of things that Dana and I agree on. It, and the vendetta is not necessarily against him. There have been personal attacks thrown because that's where it got to, which he started. I will point that out by um, calling my fights fake. He was the person that introduced that idea bringing in the steroids um, accusations, that was Dana White. Um, and specifically hi hiring coaches for Ben Askren to beat me because he wanted me to lose. So there was so personal things. So he chose things. you as an enemy. Yeah. There was, and there was personal things on my side, on my side of things that were said. Can but I the, ask but the you point, something? Well, the do, do you think that do you think that, you, okay, for example, right, say you build a company up, you build up better, and in your heart, you're doing good in your heart, and, you're, and you feel like you're doing what you wished other people did for you, and then you have another kid out of nowhere come on and be like, bro, how you're running your job is filthy and gross, but he's like, bro, you don't even know who I am, so now you just came at his neck without even asking him his perspective. Would you not give him the right to try to take you out too? I would, uh, I would take the criticism and listen to it. And especially if it was from my fighters, my heavyweight champions, Francis Ngannou and John Jones. And so all you're saying there's fighters, smoke, there's fire. All, everybody's criticizing him. I was just the loudest about it. Everyone, the whole MMA community, like the fighters on his roster saying we don't get paid enough. So I would look at the criticism, even if I had my opinion, I would get to truth. And that's where I think society is he heading. That's why I like Vivek, because he's just about the truth. There's less, no ego involved, X, Y, Z. However, th that's why it it's bullshit at some point because regardless of uh, my attacks on Dana it's just like it's and I respect him and his work ethic and what he did for MMA and the company he, everyone thinks I hate the UFC I was a UFC fan growing up I, I still enjoy it yeah, I, there's I'm, pictures of you going to the Chuck Liddell thing this is what I'm saying like people think I hate the, no 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 they have the message misconstrued because of all the drama that got thrown into it. And the message is, is, is very simple, and it's just treat fighters better and pay them more. If they, the fighter minimum payment is $12,500 for a fight. So even if they got three fights a year, they're still m making not enough to, to get by because they have to pay for their own coaches, gyms, their coaches, yeah. their meals, their camp, their travel all of these things right so mm -hmm. if they if the ufc raised that minimum the fighter minimum to fifty thousand dollars a year not only would it improve the sport because you'd have more people in gyms more often the lower level fighters would want to strive to be greater because the, and they would only focus on that they wouldn't have to be teachers they wouldn't have to be janitors and they could focus on their craft and they would could make fifty thousand to a hundred thousand a year if they fought twice that would cost
cost the UFC $20 million a year. Can and in terms of what they make, billions, billions, and billions. Do they make of, it's, billions? The mo- it's the most profitable sport in the world. And I believe it's. Wait, is I, that true? Yes. It's, and I believe it's. I, be- I dare say it is. It is. I, I might want to. I don't know if this is true, but I think it's the only sport that's like 100, like actually profitable. Um, on on a fiscal year basis, maybe the the NFL that could be wrong, but it is the most profitable. I entity. thought boxing makes way more than MMA. Box serves. So but the boxing, sport in general doesn't make as much as a UFC. Because in my mind, the reason the, why I was defending you, him is because I thought the whole pie was a lot less. So he's trying to do his best to provide in a pyramid like the top champs all the way down to the people that are beginning and they had to work up their way to the pot. But if you're saying that they're just, oh, I'm, I'm just taking all this and the fighters have to deal with it, that's a different story. The, yeah. the UFC pays its fighters 15% of the revenue that it makes. Um, whereas in the NFL, it's 50-5-0. In the NBA, it's 50-5-0. So they're basically hoarding that extra 35% for themselves. That's tough to defend. Um, Especially when it's a brutal sport, bro. And, and it's without them, you wouldn't have anything. And in the NFL, the coaches are paid for. There's health care, long-term oh. health care after four seasons. The facilities are paid for. All of these things, the food, X, Y, Z is paid for. So not only is it they make more money, but they also get everything paid for. So it really is a, a big discrepancy. And again, for a company that's making one, two, three billion dollars a year, um, twenty million dollars isn't shit. Yeah. And this is where the the big thing lies for me. And then like the long term healthcare, it's like cool. Look at where we've gotten with MMA. Great job, UFC. But like now, you should care about the people that your got employees you there. and the people that got you there. And the fighters are the content. They are the ones risking their lives. True. And the discussion. Also, it's funny because I if didn't they know pay though. their fighters 15% of the revenue. But that includes Conor McGregor. So like if you got rid of Conor McGregor, it's really like... He's the th- he's five percent of that, so it's like they're actually only giving him like ten percent. So it's even crazier if you like actually. Well, there's some break UFC fighters that say they're like, oh, it changes once you get to a level, right? They they they, they renegotiate contracts once they start bringing it in. Uh, Who's the gentleman uh, that just like fought there, there's Tyson? There's probably like four of handful of them. Yeah, but they're also still not getting nearly what they deserve by any means so it's it, it, but let's just start with the minimum and fix that like yeah. and w- some health care would you ever be down to sit down have a conversation with him if he's like okay let's throw some ideas out there or do you fully think that he's just like it doesn't care this is truly like his perspective is it like his way or the highway because he built this like as his baby yeah i don't i don't think he believes that they deserve it i don't think he will change it and i would love to have a conversation with him and and pick his point of views because from hearing the way he speaks i i i find it challenging to accept that he's selfish i don't know why it's uh, maybe he's just a great speaker and that that Uh, could be a problem but i i would i would love to challenge his heart because i would love to see not only you make the change, but I would love to see him step into a. Oh, we're gonna make it. the change regardless. No oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. All right. No, well, yeah. Mind. And I'm sure that we're gonna make a fighters union, and and we are making a fighters union. You're like the Fran Dresser. Been, Fran, Fran, what? We have been. Fran Dresser. Behind Fran the dresser? scenes. Fran. Mr. Sheffield, did you know what I'm talking well, about here or no? No, but like. <laughs> <laughs> She's the president of SAG Afra, but she I defends mean, actors. That's why the whole strike happened is because they were going to even hurt the actors less that don't have any income their way. Yeah. And she says, that's it, With no one's AI acting. And she has the income. power to shut everything down and say, no, we're not moving until you guys mm-hmm. understand that I'm going to take care of these actors. And that's yeah, what so you're trying to do. Exactly. There's no union for fighters, which is crazy. Because, right. like, boxing has been around since... Decade. Mm-hmm. The f- 1500s. Well, what a beautiful so. time for fighters right now to have someone like you, you know, to bring things to light and make a change and i'm sure they're incredibly grateful for that the problem you know? child 
fixing the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's <laughs> funny that you <laughs> started you the said? episode with that because my my Susie calls me the solution child and she says you're oh, wow. she's every every almost every time she, we talk she says you're not the problem child mm -hmm. you're not I, I've told you that yeah. I, and, and like you're you're a righteous man and, and like for example the situation with me and Logan right like you could have easily just been like uh yeah I'm siding with my brother I'm not gonna side with this kid but you were weighed out and you were like, nah, I just feel like you guys will get back together. I'm not going to just side with somebody. I'm logically going to weigh this out and realize I'm not going to pick a side. I'm going to let you boys deal with it as men. And then me and you talk behind closed doors. And to be honest, bro, that was one of my biggest fears. I thought I was going to lose you and GP because I really care about you guys. So, like, when I got a call from both of you, and I'm going to sound like a weak man, but I, I cried. I, like, I literally got so scared of losing people I love that when you guys both called me, I was like, okay, good. Like, at if they could believe in me, then I could probably move forward and not lose everybody in my life. Well, that's because I know both you and Logan. And Logan can be very confusing, but he has, he means well, and he has, a, he has a, a good heart deep down. And, mm -hmm. and um, I, I know that of you as well. And so it was just like, okay, they're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, like, so these things happen. Yeah. I'm not going to. Yeah, and, and, I would t and I would tell Logan the same thing. I'm not going to just, like, and I wouldn't want him to choose a side if he believed there was a greater answer or outcome. Because you feel waiting. like you're shortening him. You're, like, yeah, you're cheapening like, the, the value of it. Yeah. We, uh, we, we got to a place where we discussed a lot of your success and a lot of your change based on you facing your fears and heading towards adversity. What is the thing that you're fearing right now? What, what scares you? What, what puts you in a position of, like, just chaos emotionally? The, the world, the outside, the, the rest of the world, my, my, my generation and peers and younger and the kids that are iPad kids being sucked into today's generation and the, the challenges that they're gonna have to face and overcome and and the the evil in the world I think is probably the first on that list can I say something which I just found to be really beautiful you were in fear that you weren't gonna be at the level that you're at now and now you're at that level and you told yourself, I want to serve. I don't want this to be about me anymore. I want to do things for other people. And now your new fear is mm -hmm. what other people are going to go through. Yeah. I think just from Figure seeing that, I feel like maybe God puts fear in people's hearts to head that direction. Yeah, no, for sure. I think fear is a, a, a great thing. Yeah. And it, and it motivates me every day in boxing, like a fear of losing again, a fear of a lot of things, and a, a fear of um, not being good enough. Like people are, don't embrace fear, and then I guess it doesn't even become fear, it becomes fuel, and then it just like, there's so much you can do with that, and it, it'll push you to be great. So I don't know, I think it's, it's a beautiful thing. They mocked Donald Trump many times about, oh, I think he's going to try to run for president. All the way back in the day, they were, like you could watch TV shows. I mean, for God's sake, he was huge when he was in the movie Home Alone. Uh, do you see yourself as an older man helping this country in a political standpoint? Yeah, I mean, people, people, uh, I've joked, you know, so much about becoming president one day. Did you use a like comedy to test the waters to see how people would handle it? <laughs> Yeah, like my like, peers this is a joke. and stuff. No, <laughs> I literally. Don't mean it. And then like some of my some of my affiliates and business partners and stuff were like, oh <laughs> yeah, like that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I see that for you, and it's going to happen. Um, and it's funny, like if you if you think about it, like the if if Donald Trump became the president because of you're fired, Apprentice. It's like, the, of course, the future president's going to be a fucking vlogger, YouTuber, social media <laughs> kid. Like, no, at, for the, at the it, end it, of the it, day, it's because he he was an entrepreneur. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. well, let me let me just put a small thing. The vlog, right? 
why I would vote for somebody in your stature is because, well, one, I gotta make sure his heart is in the right place. And I think now because of social media, you could actually see who a human being is. It's actually gonna level out the country a lot. But the second most important thing is, how did he act when he entered a new area? He entered vlogging. He said, these are the changes we need to make to make it successful. And you did that, but you were still like this little asshole kid that yeah, was doing exactly. things. But then you go and you take that same value into boxing. Now you're getting people money in their pockets to feed their children. Brother, mm. the, the, you don't become a great man overnight. You are walking we did in, it the in the steps. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, I think that's, I'm that's having, for you. That's how, thank yeah, you. That was great. That, that, you put it great. You guys convinced me. Campaign <laughs> marketing uh, director. Thank nice. you, George. But I think I, I've joked about it, but I, 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 I just don't know if I want that responsibility. Like, Vivek is doing a good job. We actually have a penciled in for this episode, not this episode. Just imagine Vivek. Come in. <laughs> uh, uh, Vivek. Vivek. Vivek rhymes with cake. I do not hear the difference. that you're saying? V Vivek. You're saying v v Vivek. Okay. It's Vivek. Vivek. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I swear I didn't hear the difference. <laughs> Vivek. Yeah. So Vivek, um, I can't wait to have a conversation with him because I just want to, I want to get to know his heart, bro. And I think that's what our country needs to do. I need, to, I, I'm done with, I don't want to hear your, your promises. To be honest, the president is, is not as powerful as we were made out to seem a president to be. Yeah. I want to know where your heart lies. So when I'm not in the room, are you at least leaning towards the decisions that I would make with my values. Yeah, exactly. Then that's that's more so what the president is, right? It's like the quarterback on the team, but you still need the 10 other players. Yeah. Um, but but they are the leader, they are the morale, and they are the backbone and I think that that is important and he's great for a reason. I don't know much about politics, guys. Uh, especially I don't know even politics about uh, my country. So I'm, I'm not familiar at all with the American politics. Uh, if I don't know about it, anything. The only thing that I've been teach all my life is that never trust politician. That's all. Because in my country is different. A politician, you can play with the rules. You can play with the, you know, it's just, just it's it's just different. You you don't trust no one. The rules change for their benefits. I, but but I believe this is everywhere. The politicians they are everywhere like this. And of not creating so much division with someone being elected that's what i don't like about politics is we get in this back and forth battle about whose side republican democrat this that and we're just fighting with each other when we forget that it's the united states of america and we are the divided states of america currently mm -hmm. especially because of x and twitter and social media and that's what i don't like about politics is is it creating so much division and arguing amongst us and hatred amongst our our own people and i don't know what the the solution is to that you might not know it yet because god might not want to reveal it to you right now but just so we're going to check right now uh, jake speaking about um Elon Musk and we're gonna stop it from here because the other one speak about love and his relationship with uh, his girl I guess so we're not gonna get to to this so we're just gonna stop it on his point of view about Elon Musk and we move on from there moving guys. the direction and brother you're a leader I guarantee you if anybody's gonna have the answer you might be one of the people that like you know stumble upon it but speaking about being a leader and setting an example what are your thoughts on Elon Musk and his direction that he's taking um, do you feel like he's moving in a good direction do you what where does your heart lie when you look at elon i think he's one of the greatest uh humans alive um point point blank period and in terms of solely uh i guess just actions i guess first and foremost like preserving freedom of speech that yeah. was lost in this country with what he did with with Twitter and X is such a massive thing um, and wanting to become multi-planetary putting all of his money on the line almost going bankrupt for for SpaceX to you know save humanity essentially or hopefully save humanity at at some point um, okay. and renewable energy with his whole solar what do you guys I want to speak about this one 
is is really distressful thing like uh, when you are stressed and you do this shit i have two toys i bought them two toys i bought this one and the other one like okay i don't know what is this like you know it's, it's literally when you are stressed you take out of your mind it's literally i'm gonna put the link i'm gonna put the link guys in the in the video downstairs you can find it maybe you you if you want to buy it i don't know for the people interesting for company uh which again like kind of goes back to like saving and and uh making the planet a better place and no no human is perfect i don't i don't know the man at all but i know that he does have a greater purpose and i can't really point to anyone else who's just like actually doing things to make a difference and to m make progress and to help the world there, there's a lot of people who say they're going to do it which is kind of what a lot of politicians are doing but they're not actually putting all their money on the line and spending every waking hour of every day to to be the change yeah have you met him um no I know he's very tapped into social media. Like, he, yeah. he, for somebody who does so much, he's very like involved with culture. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever watched him, but he's always like commenting on things that I would, in my mind, would be like, Elon is like, how do you have the time to even know about what's going on in this direction? And um, I, I keep saying this. Well, that's 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 what makes him great, and I think the best people in the world know exactly what's going on because then they can figure out how to change it. A lot of times I'm on social media observing everything. I probably know about so much more shit than the aimlessly scrolling person because it's part of my job so that I can understand, interpret, comprehend, and make change for the better. And I think Elon's doing the same thing. So he has to know where the tides are, what the people are saying and, and how to uh, proceed from there so it's actually probably very important in a big part of his day to spend maybe two three hours online in the in the world to, to so he can connect and he can see oh, i'm lonely this winter i'm fulfilling the wish of the loving being i don't know that would hold for me They're always just like talking about like his adventures or the cool things or like the pop. Co if I want a parade that one day I would do an interview with Andrew and people said that it was a different side of Andrew that they got to see because I truly just wanted to get to know the man. And so like I, I feel like if you are watching this, Elon, I would I know this is a long shot. This is a crazy like suggestion, but I don't care respectfully about all of the cool technology you've made. I would love to have a conversation with you just to get to know you because I know you have a big hand in what our generation's like outcome's gonna be. Yeah. And, and I truly would love to just get to know you and talk to you so not only myself, but my peers and the people that watch could understand because it gets kind of scary when somebody has so much power and you really don't know. You can watch one video and like completely get scared of this man's decisions. Like like the neural links. Like people are like, oh, what if he's trying to control the world? But like, what's his passion? Why did you even want to do that in the first place? There, I, I just wish that people that interviewed him got to know his heart rather than try to gas him up with the success that he's already had, if that makes any sense. Yeah. No, good, for good sure. Good point. Uh, definitely. And, and I think you do a great job of bringing that out of people. And I don't think it's a long shot, by the way. Like, Well, if you know him, please tell him that I want to talk to him. Uh, <laughs> anybody, if anybody best. knows but him, please. I, God, what, I would like, do is, I, what I would do is, um, is like, just start t posting your videos on X. Start podcast. tweeting it? He goes, you said tweet. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> X. I'm Xing. What is it What does it even now? mean? How do you, I, I X, X somebody? I, like, think it, I think it might be that's still called That's one of the questions I want to know. I think it still might be called a tweet, but the platform is X. I don't know. But... But, but you should you should be posting your podcast on there and then and then just putting it out there, bro. I'm sure you'll see it. People think it's a long shot to get in touch with me. And by the way, I was listening to you earlier when you were like, How am I gonna get in touch with Andrew? Like you could have just texted me. 
Oh. <laughs> like, I, you were like, oh, I'm never going to get in touch with Andrew. Like, bro, like, I could have just messaged him. Oh, like, I didn't even really think about I, that. I, I, yeah. <laughs> but, That's but so I don't funny. Know, but I, I had I, this whole inspirational, like, dude, yeah. I had dreams. And, like, it was meant to be. And he's like, bro, I could have just. <laughs> you literally you just could have. What's that? Yeah, but it, but I don't know Elon, so can't help you there. But oh well, then you're just worthless. We're wrapping this yep. up. Th- no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to. Yeah. So guys, that was the reaction for today. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, we we see the different side of Jake Paul as he's not the, the villain in the story anyway. Uh, for the people who are interested to watch the full video, check it. I will leave the his link. You can check the original video. And make sure to check the store, guys, to find cool things, cool items, cool t-shirt, cool design t-shirt. And maybe you're going to like ones and just buy it as a support for us, guys, to do more content and to have a better camera anyway. Thank you, guys.